celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life with Sterling Fox on AM 650. Welcome back to the program. We're talking boating with the folks from Boating BC. President Don Pretty and Director Ian McPherson are with us, uh, both from the island. Uh, Don runs the Canoe Cove Marina in Victoria. Ian's enterprise is Nanaimo Yacht Charters and Sailing School and Stones Boatyard. Uh, by the way, lots of terrific and congratulations to you and everyone at Boating BC, guys, for a terrific website. BoatingBC uh, uh, at uh, .ca is the website. It is a terrific resource. We've been addressing uh, uh, in in sort of uh, uh, in in terms of, of talking to people who might for the first time be looking at boating as a lifestyle option, especially now that life has a few more options and a little bit more time on the schedule. Lots of terrific information on the Boating BC website about uh, all the, the sorts of conversations we've been having here in much more detail. So wonderful website, guys. Great stuff. BoatingBC.ca. Is Don, uh, British Columbia, we're, we're a renowned boating uh, place. Are we as well known as a boat building place? Well, that's a great question. We've had a lot of boats built in British Columbia over many, many years. And I would say uh, we're still well known for building uh, aluminum boats, fishing boats. Okay, uh, yeah. Many, many good builders in, in the province. We also have... Uh, and you can see those literally at any fishing dock in the province. They're the, the, the steel ones, the, uh, the the shiny steel ones, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steveston Docks just down the road from us here in Richmond, uh, Granville Island, they're all over BC. They are. And the, they're all built right here. Many of them are built here. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in Gibson's BC, uh -huh. uh, Campbell River, there are great builders of aluminum boats. There's also a lot of fiberglass boats being built still in, in British Columbia, and I'm thinking of Campion up in Kelowna. Oh, of course. One yeah. of the longest uh, running uh, fiberglass boat building companies, you know, in Canada, in Kelowna. Okay. Very good business. Uh, Hurston over in uh, North Vancouver, Hurston Glasscraft, been building boats for years. So. And then I, I used to live in White Rock, and there's that guy down in Crescent Beach who builds like super mega yachts. Uh, what's his name? Uh, that's the, uh, the Charles family, Crescent Boat Builders. Oh, or yacht builders. the yep. boats coming out of that place. I saw one for six million bucks. It was just outstanding. It was outrageous, but it was wonderful. Yep. So that's, But that's a real custom yard, isn't it? It's very custom in that case, yes. And you, you were saying during the break that in addition to some uh, boat building prestige in our province. We also have a lot of agencies in uh, Vancouver, Victoria area for people who are looking to buy. Lots of help for would-be buyers. Yes, I mean, we're very well represented here. A lot of the European manufacturers are represented here with um, good dealerships. You have Beneteau, which is the probably the world's biggest boat builder. And you have Jeannot, and you have Hunter, and you have Dufour. I hope I don't leave anybody out, mm -hmm. but we are very well represented here. So somebody w wanting to buy the latest state-of-the-art boat can get it right here in Vancouver. Right, and uh, regardless of where its point of origin, right? Exactly. Interesting. And keep yeah. in mind, we have a great number of very good boat brokers who will represent many different lines in new and used boats. Okay. And, and many of those brokers are members of Boating BC, and uh, they do a tremendous job on educating new people in boating and what to look for. And then they'll go looking, and they'll look in Canada, of course, and they'll look across the line in the U.S. or other parts of the world, depending on what the boat, uh, the purchaser's needs are. Is it a typical scenario where a person uh, decides to make the take the plunge, so to speak, and they they're going to get rid of the ski boat and they're going to get get something big that they can sleep on and weekend on? It's time for that big change. Do people trade in the ski boat then? Is that is that a, a, a doable thing, Ian? Yes, absolutely. My neighbor is a classic example of that. He's got a wonderful little fishing boat, which he's had, but his wife won't go with him. There isn't a toilet on board. There isn't a cooking facility. He's on his own. Right. So he went out and bought a boat with just that. Oh, okay. So now him and his wife are happily boating together. Ah. And he said, I had to make that choice. It was getting lonely out there. I'll bet it was. Yeah. So he traded it in, got yeah, a little bought, bit of value, and, and, and so it, it works the same as cars or any other. Absolutely. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. 
in some cases in the bigger boats they may not do a trade but they'll take that boat and sell it and you know work out a deal that makes sense yes. right okay so it's you're, you're really uh, there are there's lots of resources lots of backup and support people province-wide and not just here on the coast either right no that's right no the interior and uh, the okanagan all up uh, the province there's very good dealers and, and, and repair facilities. I wanted to ask you very quickly, um, both of you spend a lot of time on the water here on the coast, uh, up and down BC. If we venture south into Washington state waters, what are the rules with respect to licenses and all of that kind of stuff? Does it change dramatically? Uh, no, the uh, the PCOC would be something that they would recognize in Washington as uh, they have a they have a similar license okay, down there, okay. so they would recognize that uh, Canadian boaters or BC boaters are welcome to cruise down to Washington State. They would need to check in with U.S. Customs right. on their arrival, just of just as U.S. people would check in at uh, with CBSA up here in Canada. Um, but no, you're very welcome to go cruising down south, and uh, you know from from my backyard, you know Friday Harbor or Roche Harbor is just across the pond. You know? uh, absolutely, they, they will charge you twenty five dollars for a little cruising ticket, which is stuck on the window of the coach house, just to show that you're registered and they know who you are. Ah, that's like going to Switzerland. They don't, they, they don't want to see anything but your money. Yeah. <laughs> you have to pay to go through this tunnel. Absolutely, that's right, <laughs> guys. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you. I look forward to another opportunity opportunity to do so uh, soon by the way because uh, this is we're just getting started and it's only April we got a whole summer of boating ahead of us and by the way friends in addition to uh, being able to listen to uh, our guests uh, people like Don Pretty and Ian McPherson uh, they are representatives of Boating BC and they are proprietors of a wonderful website check it out boatingbc.ca. Our thanks again to Don Pretty and Ian McPherson. Thanks, guys, for coming over from the island and uh, regaling us with some tall tales of boating in British Columbia. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. It's been a pleasure. Much. I look forward yeah. to another opportunity soon. And we'll see you soon right here on Boomer Life. <laughs>